Okay, today is a dreaded day with tractor time with Tim. Can that be? I'm sitting by the tractor. How can it be a dreaded day? Well, today I'm going to grease the fitting that can't be greased. Yeah, there's a grease fitting on a universal joint under the tractor here that is very, very difficult to grease. Anytime you look on the online forums, you'll hear people talking about it. A lot of discussion on how the best way to grease it. Now, if you'll look back at our prior video on this topic, you'll see that I took the whole center section of the tractor out and I greased it from the top. Well, in my case, I kind of had that part out anyway for another purpose, so I greased it while I was in there. But uh, it is a lot more trouble to do it that way than you know trying to figure out a way to grease it from underneath. So what we're going to do this evening is grease with a different type of grease tip. We're going to use this uh, needle tip here. Okay, you're going to see a regular grease fitting, a grease zerk as they're called. Okay, and we're going to connect that to the end of our grease gun and insert this right in the ball of the grease fitting. Hey, before we do that, I want to show you something that's going to make my greasing in the future less dreadful. And I think it might be worthwhile uh, for your greasing times too. Technology and grease guns hasn't changed. I was asking my brother Tom, and he's old. But he cannot remember it changing. Well, I should ask my dad to see if it's changed in his entire lifetime. But a typical grease gun, just like this, well, they had a longer handle most of the time and they weren't the, the pistol grip, but they had the plunger, they have the, you know, they took tubes or they sucked grease out of a big can. Really, that hasn't changed for a long time. Now, this is a particularly good one here, but even then, you can see that we're having some trouble with seepage. This is also really good quality grease in this gun. We're having some trouble with seepage in there, and so it's just, they're just annoying. They're good enough to get the job done, but there's a little bit of frustration. Now, if you look back to one of my earlier videos, you can see that an old grease gun that I had basically just blew out the whole bottom side of it, got grease all over me right in the middle of the video. You'll have to check that out, that's kind of funny. We have found a new product, and this product is called Lube Shuttle. At a distance, this grease gun looks a lot like a regular grease gun, except you see something different down here. But it begins to mess with your mind when I start to take this off. It's just an outer tube that's just there for protection of the inner plastic tube. Now there's no plunger in this grease gun. And this tube is half used, or maybe even more than half used at this point. Right? And I can take it out. It's threaded in right there into the gun. If you've got this tube or a brand new tube, you just push it up a little bit. In this case, since it's almost used, I have to use a, a screwdriver here to reach up, but you basically push that up a little bit till the grease sticks out a little bit. Then you stick it right on there. This provides a way for you to change the type of grease you're using even when a tube's not empty. I don't think you can do that with a traditional grease gun. Now, you do want this outside protector on, but it's really of no import to the actual greasing. It's just to keep you from tearing up that tube. Now I'll put a link to these in the description below. You can probably hear it coming. If you'll use coupon code TTWT, you'll get 5% off at checkout. Now these are made in Germany. They make these guns with a pistol grip, with a more traditional long handle, and they also make a, an electric one, a uh, battery powered grease gun. These are metric. So your lock and lube, if you already have one, will not directly fit on here, okay? There's an adapter which makes the lock and lube fit, but uh, Lube Shuttle also provides their own uh, lock and lube style coupler, okay? So it's just very similar in looks from the outside. Uh, the Lube Shuttle guys tell me that it functions dramatically different inside here to be able to lock onto the fitting. So here's how it goes. We put it in and it locks on, so you cannot get it apart. Now, I was showing you this uh, needle, and it's got a, this particular one's got a nice little feature. I can slide that over, and that even keeps it from turning even further. You might be worried about the price of these things. You can see these tubes. You can, you can say, well, gee, these tubes might be more expensive. They're really, they're really not. Maybe just a little bit, uh, but for me, the handiness is worthwhile. Again, I'll put a link to the Lube Shuttle site below. You can only use the TTWT code at the link that I give you. 
we're taking a look at that site here. Loop-shuttle.us slash store will get you there. These first items on that page are probably a good place to start. These kits come with a grease gun and 10 tubes of grease. For uses on equipment like mine, Loop Shuttle recommends either G2 or G200. So take a look at those packages first. Further down the page, you'll see accessories like the Safe Lock Quick Coupler, extended length hoses, and other things you might need. Remember, the coupon code TTWT is only available at this site. Well, let's get started with this greasing job. Now, what we're really wanting to do is grease a fitting that's very hard to see under here with this needle nozzle. I don't know if I can show you that very easily. So I thought maybe I would try to show you the principle on a grease fitting right here uh, that we can see. One thing more I should say about the grease gun, this one's got, I don't know, it's a 18 inch hose on it. This other loop shuttle gun illustrates the option of the one meter hose. Now my brother's been telling me for years to get a one meter hose. Get that, it'll be a lot easier to handle because you can get your gun out of the way. You know, you don't have to worry about where it is compared to where you're greasing. So you can get that right there with the lube shuttle gun. So I'd recommend that as an option. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this needle nozzle and the objective is to hit that um, little ball right in there and to push that in. And I'm able to inject the grease right into the ball. So that's what we're looking at right there. Now a little bit slid out. There's no question about that. You seeing the grease come out? A little bit. One more pump maybe. Yeah, we saw it grow. Okay. So we're under the tractor now and this is the flywheel of the engine. So what we need to do is we need to turn this flywheel counterclockwise and you can turn it by hand although it's heavy. But we need to turn that flywheel by hand. I've already done it, but I push it counterclockwise. It will not go back clockwise, so you cannot push it too far. I push it counterclockwise until I see this hole matching up with this, uh, that grease fitting right there that's on the universal shaft, the main engine drive shaft. Yeah, I think you're seeing that there. So I'm pointing at the grease fitting with the screwdriver. So right there's the little ball we want to hit. So we're pointed downward the way we need to be to get to that fitting. So I'll take my needle nozzle here. I'll run it right up through there. And I'll push that ball in. And I can feel it push in right there. I'm in there. And when you hear that noise, that's good. That's the grease coming out around the U-joint. I gave it a couple extra squirts. And then as you take the nozzle out of the fitting, it's going to squirt back a little bit while that ball is trying to reseat. But we got her greased, and that's all there is to it. It's a lot easier to reach with this needle nozzle than what it is with a, you know, a regular grease end. Check this out. I've been pretty rough on one of my lines here. I, I suspect I did this just the other day. Um, I uh, got the whole tractor up on a big log, a big stump kind of thing, firewood kind of thing. It had rolled under, I got rolled under here and somehow and I couldn't get off and I probably should have been a little more patient with it. So that's, that's one thing to be careful about when you're... The underside of this tractor is not incredibly safe. Uh, they, they do make, for some tractors, they do make a shield you can put under here, but uh, I don't have one. So this is the fitting on the other, other end of that main drive shaft, and I'm going to put my lube shuttle coupler right up on there. I've got it good and tight now. Now see, this would be a good place for that one meter long hose. I am uh, squeezing the pistol grip with my other hand, and you hear that sound? That is a good sound. Okay. Now this is the auto connect mechanism. And it will rotate freely if you have the PTO set in the rear position. If you have PTO set in mid or mid and rear, this will be locked. Well, you need it to be able to rotate freely so that you can find the grease fitting there. Okay, I'm hooked on that fitting really good. 
least I think I am. Oh, there comes the grease right around here. Maybe I can rotate a little bit. And you can see the grease coming out right there. That's what it looks like. Now there's a shaft fitting here. Okay, and then there's a, another fitting up here on this end of the auto connect. And I think I'm going to have to let the auto connect down to be able to get better access to that fitting. Now that the auto connect is down, I can actually get to that fitting fairly easily. At least I think I can. I'm getting to it from my side, which is not easy for you to see. But maybe you'll see the grease coming out better, actually. You've seen a coupler go on a fitting before, so. Can you see that grease? Probably. Certainly after I turn it a little bit, you'll see that there's been grease maybe come out of there. And you can see that's what we just greased there. Okay, it is a, a good opportunity to get a good look at the auto connect mechanism. And again, this one's four years old, so it's, it's not new by any means. Uh, but it still looks fairly good. I don't see anything significantly worn. That's always a good thing to look for while you're under here. I don't really see any signs of leaks, anything like that. Now there's one more grease fitting to hit up here on the four-wheel drive drive shaft. Now this drive shaft can't be turned, I don't believe, very much. So if you're not in the right position, you'll have to come back another, you know, have to move the tractor a little bit or something, I think, to, to turn it. I really like these quick connect couplers that'll lock right on. That really helps the greasing job. You don't have to hold it right up there in that case. There. I think you saw the grease come out of that. Now, I've shown you in another video, and I'm not going to spend too much time on it here. There's a little rubber boot that's attached with this pipe clamp. You have to slide that back to get to the other end of the four-wheel drive drive shaft. And then there's a few fittings right around this axle. Again, I showed you in another video, so I don't think I need to show you those. And Really, that's, that's the under the tractor greasing job. The fitting that I wanted to show you the most and spend the most time on was that fitting under the tractor. And I'm pretty sure we got some good video of that. That'll be great. I also wanted to show you this lube shuttle greasing system. Really, after a whole lifetime, this is the first time I've ever seen anything that really changes the game. No plunger, the ability to use all of the grease, it sucks it right up out of here instead of it going around the plunger and no, no drip, no any, there's just no problems like that with these guns. You know, it's rare that something changes radically like this. They've made them look very similar to a regular grease gun, but it's radically different in how the, the tubes work. So I'd recommend you get one of these. This is a good solution. We've got more details about this grease gun on our website. Well, I hope you've learned something in this video, and if you haven't taken the time to grease those U-joints under your tractor, do it now. I guarantee you those U-joints will fail if you don't grease them. It's very important. It doesn't have to be done every day. It doesn't have to be done incredibly frequently, but you really ought to do it every 50 hours or so, like the book says. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Casey says, what about me? I need some grease. Well, that's interesting. Casey is so much easier to grease than anything about Johnny. There's the obvious ones up here on the boom that need to be greased all the time. And then the ones that are hard to get to, look right down here. They're right here. And they just run tubes into the hard part. So, Casey's trivial to grease.